He's our champion uh, for youth leadership and engagement at the United Nations. Please welcome His Excellency Ravi Karkara. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a great, great honor to be standing here. I'm a son of a UN peacekeeping soldier and a son of a mother who was a feminist, so that really brings me here. So, Excellency, thank you so much for championing from Paraguay the youth agenda. Really a big round of applause to you. And to all the youth leaders and really to the, to the organization bringing young leaders here together. As it was said before that we are really in a very, very important threshold. We are, as it said, so many important anniversaries. But I think what we really are celebrating today is youth leadership. And youth are just not the leaders of tomorrow. Are youth the leaders of today? Yes. I don't hear you guys. Are youth the leaders of today? Yes. That's brilliant because exactly what should be resonated. Because if we are looking at the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, when we are celebrating young women's leadership in the Beijing Plus 20, and we are looking at the 70 years of the UN, what an amazing moment. It was said we are sitting on the youth bulge, 1.8 billion young people across the world. There are our solutions they are our partners in social transformation. We are on the onset of the second youth bulge in Africa. Huge capacity, huge leadership that is coming through. When do you think the UN system for the first time talked about youth and peace building? A question to all of you. Anybody? Give me a year. 19... 36 League of Nations conference in Geneva was about youth and peace building after World War I. We are celebrating youth and peace building, and there's a very important meeting coming up in Jordan from a week from now. Still, we are talking about peace, which is fundamental to any human development, social justice, or equality. Fast forward 2030. I think 2030, when we are sitting here with some of you, as the ambassador said, as the leaders and heads of states, we should be talking about a planet which is 50-50, which is equal for every single young woman and every single young man. We should be overcoming social injustice and celebrating diversity and equality. And that is exactly what the UN system is about, recognizing the personhood, but most importantly, recognizing human rights of every single person on this planet. And these are in the core of the Sustainable Development Goals, as it was said before. I really want to indulge you, if you can allow me for a second, because this is a youth meeting. I want you to pair up with an A and a B next to you quickly, and we'll do a small game because it is related to what I will talk about next. A and B. So A, I want you to hold your fist very tightly. And I do this all the time. The ones who have played, please carry on. And B is when I count one, two, three, please get the fist open. Everybody has this? A, can I see your fist? And B is when I count one, two, three, get it open. One, two, and three. OK, stop. Stop. Now, B is, it is your turn to do the fist. And A is? You have to get it open. One, two, and three. OK, OK, we'll quickly process this, because I have very limited time. My question to you is, how many of you were able to get the fist open? The ones who are raising the hand, how many of you did it without using physical force? How many of you simply asked? Can you tell us, please, here? What did you do? I simply asked. You know, really, this is a very important. So really, core to value-based leadership is to think out of the box. 
to change the conditions. We talked more than 100, 100 countries without look at, looking at each other. We decided to use force. But we could have simply asked, requested. And this is exactly what we try to do this in this very important sacred hall. It is to really collaborate. And collaboration is an important value. So as we talk about youth leadership, we are talking about value-based leadership that acts on human rights, promotes social justice, promotes inclusion and equality, but also ensures there's accountability. And especially for young people, it is important that we look at accountability impact in bringing changes so that both the conditions of youth and the positions of youth are transformed when we look at implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. With this last quote, I would really like to end that leaders are not known by their followers. They are known by the leaders that they create. Thank you very much.